It's a very warm welcome. And I am talking to Sean Bank. He is the CEO of Imagine X Consulting. And we're talking about ramplifying. How do you ramplify your business during an unprecedented time and really amplify your customer service and relationships? So, Sean, first of us, tell us a little bit about Imagine X. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, Imagine X is a boutique technology consulting firm that focuses primarily on cybersecurity custom software engineering and data insights. Um, a lot of the work we do is, is helping, um, you know, the largest companies in the country and in the world um, secure their systems and um, essentially build software in a, in a more efficient manner and be able to understand how their users are using the, those software. So you worked at Accenture for many years and you've had lots of experience in the consulting arena. What advice or guidance do you give to people right now who are looking to expand, to develop in a rather chaotic external environment? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, with the world, the world has changed right in, in front of us in the past few months. And really to survive in, uh, in today's reality, um, it requires ultimate flexibility and adaptability. Um, you know, the old mantra of, um, you know, just kind of doing what used to work is, is out the window. Um, everything we have to do, um, we have to potentially, you know, be aware and, and anticipate that that will change even within hours. Um, we've seen over the past two months that our business is changing right in front of our eyes. Our customers are changing in front of our eyes. We had um, several hospitality clients that were severely impacted immediately that changed uh, everything about how they worked. And so how we... Give us an example. Can you give an, us an example of how you've helped people navigate the change, something very concrete and specific? Yeah, I mean, you know, as a virtual company ourselves, um, the majority of, of our employees are spread across the country. We, do, we are headquartered here in Atlanta and have uh, about 30 folks in Atlanta, but, but we're used to um, remote working. And so I think the first thing that we were able to assist our customers is to help them understand how to work in this, in this geographically spread and remote, um, remote environment because it's not foreign to us. We've been executing software projects and cybersecurity projects by not being um, directly with our customers and have been very successful. And so it is teaching and, and advising our customers on how they can communicate more effectively, how they can manage their time more effectively, and, and even some things about, um, you know, personal setup, um, you know, how to create an effective work environment at your house to allow you to be productive and efficient, um, you know, obviously while, while you know, having to tend to your family because that's just the reality of work. And, and what we've seen actually is our employees are actually being more efficient and more effective with this new setup than, than actually we were when we were in the office and prone to a lot of distraction. So the first thing you do is you say, look at your setup. Now, are there any specifics that we can give to people who are watching this or listening to this or reading about this? What are some of the questions you need to ask yourself? Um, well, you know, it, it just kind of depends on, on um, you know, how much technology you use and how comfortable you are with technology. You know, just a, a couple examples, right? Um, obviously, teleconferencing, what we're using now, Zoom. Um, you know, having the, um, the visual component uh, in communications is, is critical. You can see the nuance. You can see um, if people are paying attention. You can... Uh, you know, can see if they're happy with what you're saying. So typically, really before COVID, we were using Zoom for a long time, but we weren't really using the video component so much. Now it becomes a critical link to being as, as close to being in person as possible. And it, it does improve our communication. Um, outside of the visuals, using products like Slack or Microsoft Teams, where you have the ability to collaborate, you know, instantly with your colleagues and create different groups or different teams or different communities for um, folks to collaborate. So for instance, I'm looking at my Slack now. We have, we have about 150 different Slack channels and they range from internal operations 
to recruiting. We have a channel for each of our customers. We even have channels for specific projects. And then we have some fun channels for things like um, food and pets and, and travel, which unfortunately travel's not used that much anymore. But um, so it creates that, um, that sense of community and that sense of interaction while being physically distanced. And it has decreased our email traffic by close to 75% and really allows um, leaders like myself to consume passively, um, you know, content and, and consume knowledge and understand where my team is without having to be on status meetings or status calls. So I can just kind of see things are moving along without being kind of a, um, you know, an active participant. So your company will come in, you'll look at an organization and you will assist them in finding. So you, you don't have one specific product that you advise. You look at the best possible products out there and then assist the customer in finding those. So mm -hmm. I always, I draw the analogy. So, so if you were in the insurance world, you're not with one specific insurance company, you're offering us the very best. Exactly correct. And that's the value of a technology consultant is, is being agnostic, right? Uh, a Customers hire us to be their technical advisors. And then when they're looking to implement, let's say, a ticketing system, um, we have one customer that is about to ramp up their product um, and they need a way to support um, any customer questions, queries, um, you know, or, or issues that come up. And so they came to us and said, well, you know, what do you guys recommend in terms of setting up a ticketing system for us? Should, um, you know, should you build it? custom is there a tool out there and what we've done across you know many industries and many many product lines is we look at the best of breed systems whether it be a crm application uh, whether it be a collaboration tool set whether it be a ticketing tool set and we will um, essentially um, you know do the analysis understand what is the best tool for them in terms of what lines up with their people their processes their culture and then also give them an roi and then ultimately help them implement that product. We just finished this up for a support and, and a selling solution for one of our customers. And we did it in the, in the span of just a, really about 10 days. And so we got them up and running and able to support their customers very quickly, where traditionally their customers would, um, would be calling or emailing. Now we, we have a system set up for them. And so being agnostic is where we provide a lot of value is, not every tool is going to be perfect for every business. Um, so we, we find the right tool for our customers, knowing their environment and their systems. So of course, it's interesting for me as I'm on the cusp of a Boomer X and I look at you and go, Sean Bank, you have been doing this for the last 10 years, 15 years. You've understood the transition to a virtual world. That's what you've been doing. What companies, and if any come to mind now that you look at, um, say they've pivoted, they've done well, what companies can you see struggling? Just any thoughts you have around the concept of ramplification is ramping up your existing business and expanding your customer base in an unprecedented reality. So who's doing it and who's not? Yeah, that's a, another great question. If I could and, ask you to add yes. to um, why, you know, why they're, why they're, why they're doing it well or why they're not. I mean, I think that would be interesting to hear your perspective on that. Yes. Plus yeah, the why. Yeah, great, great question. Um, look, it depends on the industry. Again, I've been, um, as we've had, um, you know, over the past five years, you know, several hospitality clients, that's been interesting to follow that, that industry because it's been the hardest hit arguably, um, uh, with COVID. Right. And so seeing how, um, those companies are, trying to pivot away from their model. Um, for instance, you know, um, you know, companies like Intercontinental Hotels Group, right? They are using open hotels to um, house um, um, a lot of essentials, uh, right? And a lot of healthcare workers. They're, they're, they're uh, in some cases, have explored uh, turning hotels into, uh, into hospitals to support overflow. So they're looking at, at different ways that they can use their infrastructure and their services to, to, you know, help, you know, not necessarily help their existing client base, but help wherever they can um, because they know that, that, that when that comes back and, and as life returns to normal, um, their loyal customers will come back. Um, you know, another one I call out here in Atlanta is Delta Airlines, right? Um, 
also have very hard hit by what's going on. But very quickly, almost instantly, they are looking at ways to um, support the safety requirements, but also allow um, their customers and their flyers to, uh, to continue to use them where possible. Things like, um, you know, not using the middle seat, things like boarding the plane from the back to the front so that people uh, are essentially not walking and waiting on people. And they're, they're, they're kind of going in sequentially. Those are smart things. Those are things that, you know, um, buck the trend of the industry for 20, 30 years of, of how loyalty systems, you know, reward their, uh, their frequent guests. Um, but it is, it is the, the new way of doing business and understanding that, you know, people are going to be more tolerant of those things. Um, and doing what makes sense uh, is, is really the only way to survive. Um, and then other customers that we've seen are pivoting by, um, you know, just looking at ancillary revenue sources, right? Uh, the restaurant industry ho- focusing very heavily on online ordering and, and, and takeout and pickup. Retail moving heavily online, you know, Home Depot, another Atlanta company doing a great job in focusing on e-commerce and focusing on reducing the friction um, of that that customer journey from um, purchasing their products online to, um, you know, picking them up outside the store and having them ready and having them communicated so that I don't need to worry about, you know, going into a Home Depot store and, and potentially exposing myself to uh, to the virus. I can. I can be very comfortable knowing I've done all my, my ordering online. And in many cases, you know, online ordering is easier than walking up and down an aisle for, um, you know, for half an hour to find what you need online. You can get what you need, order it, you get your text. It says it's ready. You drive up and um, you send them a text. And within five minutes, it's in the back of your car. And um, it's really, I think, changed fundamentally how retail um, is going to uh, is is going to be retail has changed forever. Travel is changed forever, uh, especially business travel. Um, and so we're even seeing customers now. Some of our customers that we're used to traveling to now with COVID, they understand that we're not reducing our level of support and service by being virtual. And what that means then is now they actually have money that they had set aside for travel and expense. They now have it to use for more development or more cybersecurity or more data work. So I think it's actually a win-win for those customers that understand we have to deal with this new reality. And if we don't ramplify, uh, you know, really change how we fundamentally work um, and operate, we're not going to be around, you know, six months or a year from now. Well, the reason I love doing these interviews is I always go, the average person who's either listening to this interview or watching this interview or reading this interview, because we're using it for multi-purposes, is not going to be able to to afford your time because it's very expensive to have a consultancy like yours. So you've gone from a big organization like an Accenture to Imagine X, which is your own shop and it's more Mm -hmm. agile. Mm -hmm. Do you think that smaller, more agile um, organizations are going to find it easier to do this because you don't have as much red tape. There's not as much bureaucracy. Actually, I do. Um, another good kind of parallel I would say is, um, you know, during the recent, um, you know, PPP, the payroll protection program, right? Uh, pretty much every financial organization was offering a way for small businesses to uh, go and apply for these loans online. And it happened very quickly. What we've seen um, very clearly, and this is, you know, not only personal experience for our own company applying for this loan, um, but also talking with other small businesses and their experiences. What we did find is that the smaller financial institutions, the regional banks, uh, the smaller institutions were able to, you know, essentially build these online application processes very quickly, and in many cases more quickly than the large national banks. And so I have to believe, and I see it as well with my own company, that, you know, the smaller companies that have less red tape have the ability to pivot and be more agile in in how we we react is going to be a benefit. Uh, You know, and having the support of the the payroll protection program, it it means that we can ensure that we, we keep our employees so that we can continue to innovate 
for our customers that are moving away from the large consultancies that are typically, you know, very expensive. They're moving to the smaller, more nimble shops that have the expertise of the big fours, but also have the flexibility. And being a small company, you know, we're open to be flexible about pricing and about um, investing the time and effort of our consultants for the longer term uh, benefit of working with, with some of our customers. And so we're just agile. Um, entrepreneurship is in our DNA. Uh, it's something that we have ingrained in every one of our employees. And during this tough time, we're all banding together um, because in many cases, you know, the life of our company and the jobs of our folks depend on it. And, and I'm proud to say that, um, you know, in comparison to a lot of other companies our size or even bigger, um, we have not laid off one person. We have not furloughed one person, uh, you know, during this, this, this pandemic. And that's because everyone is rallying around and understanding that everyone has to contribute. Everyone has to hustle, as I like to, to use commonly around the, uh, uh, the company. Everyone has to hustle because that's the only way we can be successful is looking at ways uh, to think outside the box, to provide additional value to our customers, even if that value is pro bono, because we know doing the right things for our customers uh, and for our consultants is, is going to end up being the right thing for our company. Excellent. This is Sean Bank, CEO and founder of ImagineX, which is an IT consulting company. Sean, final words to anyone who's grappling with, who's sabotaged at this point, who's finding what you're saying it sounds good, but where do I begin? Just last thoughts on how does one begin? And we will have up on the screen that it's ImagineX Consulting. Thanks. Uh, I would say, you know, take it one day at a time. You know, it is very difficult to plan for the future because the future is uncertain. Uh, and as I said earlier, things are changing right in front of us. So, um, you know, just understanding that, that, you know, taking one day at a time, understanding you know, what you can do to, um, you know, get comfortable with that change and to think outside the box is really how you, you can become unstuck and breaking things down into small achievable things that, that you can impact. You know, there are outcomes that you're in control of and there are outcomes outside there that we're not in control of. So all we can do is, is you know, take the efforts to make those small, those small pro, you know, pieces of progress that, that we're in control of, and then ultimately we will we'll get through this. Well, thank you to Sean Bank, that's ImagineX Consulting, helping us understand how to ramplify in this very unpredictable time in our lives. I'm Thanks, Nadia Bilchik. For more information, please go on to nadiaspeaks.com. And Sean, we look forward to hearing from you again. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Nadia. Appreciate it. <laughs>